great. Um, good to good to good to have a chance to uh, connect with you. Hey, I appreciate it. I know you're busy. You know, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. And Super. you know, thank you for the opportunity. And you I want to thank um, you know Diana for helping me, and then uh, Diani for right. uh, setting up you know the scheduling. So I appreciate your time. Fantastic. You bet. So listen, you're going to be pitching to me. I had a chance to review your deck. So I know a little bit about the (laughs) on-demand service business that you're creating. But those that are out there that don't, I want them to have a chance to hear straight from you. Because sometimes it's somebody listening that actually ends up doing a deal, right? So that's that's pretty pretty cool here. Uh, That's what Pitch Investors Live is all about. It's, It's helping connect investors like myself with folks yeah. like you that have great ideas and businesses and inventions, uh, services, software, whatever it might be. So I'm um, excited to get a chance to uh, say hello, but look, why don't we do this? You start, give us, give me your name, the business concept, the idea, uh, give a description of it, how long you, you've been doing it and um, what you're looking for. So okay. myself, my name is Arthur Burris. I'm the founder and CEO of Sketch Incorporated. Can you speak up a little bit? I, I don't know if it's if I can't hear you as well, but I just want to make sure that everybody out there can hear you. I wonder if I put it this way, yeah. is this better? That's better. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I, so I'm Arthur Burris. I'm the founder and CEO of Sketch Incorporated. We are the developers of Portero, which is a mobile app that will help users personalize their personal lifestyle experiences. And then also help service providers, you know, increase their return on investment, providing services to local communities. My experience and my team is, is very well rounded, but my experience personally, 23 plus years in Fortune 25 companies, uh, personally have generated by leading teams or as an individual contributor, $4 billion in corporate value. I worked at companies like GE Financial Insurance, which is my foundation with the Six Sigma expertise. You know, I went from Six Sigma Green Belt to Six Sigma Master Black Belt. And then that basically provides your data-driven approach that you see um, that's more needed today, society. Yeah. I worked at Microsoft Corporation. That's where my technology experience comes in. I worked at J.P. Morgan Chase, General Motors. And then from a fintech financial technology perspective, I worked at PayPal. So oh, wow. I have a well-rounded experience. A lot of great corporate background. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's time to transfer that experience and knowledge to help, you know, the local service providers globally. And then also um, one of our perspectives from our team is to make a societal impact. So the key, uh, what we're looking for from our team, you know, we all have a foundation of making a societal impact by applying our individual skills and expertise. Yeah. Gotcha. So in regards to the business concept, Portero came about, Portero is a marketplace. So as you know, it's an online and on-demand services marketplace. And from an educational perspective, if you think about Uber, right, if you could hit Uber to obtain a ride at any time that you need it, why can't you request on-demand personal services, service providers when you need it? So for example, you have busy parents on weekends, you know, they're taking their kids to different events, um, which pretty much takes up their whole weekend. They don't have time to go to the hairdresser. They don't have time to take their laundry to be dry clean. They don't have time to wash the car, pick up groceries. So right. how do we bring those service providers to provide those services to them at a time that's convenient for our consumers at a location of their choice? Exactly. So, uh, so now let, let me ask, you, have you built this app? Is this a mobile app or a website or both? It is a mobile app. We are doing 100% mobile and we're planning on launching July. We are on target to launch in July for iOS and the App Store. And we have a lot of rich features. I mean, the capabilities that we plan on delivering our initial release, we spent four years understanding the market. And with our collective expertise of the team, we feel that we have a product and we've had people reviewed it. We have a product that's going to be optimal for both users from a consumer perspective and also for our service providers because of the capabilities that are within the app. 
Yeah. So what what are some of the other apps? I mean, we I've used some some of these other apps that connect you with service providers. Um, um, what what are what are some of those other ones called? Um, I, I'm just my mind's losing uh, uh, yeah. track of some, but I've used some of these. Uh, like you know, um, oh, do you, do you know some of the names? Yeah. So some of the leaders in the industry right now. Um, a lot of them focus on home and garden. So, for example, your home advisor, which, you know, purchased Angie's List in 2017 is when that deal finalized, right? So, a home advisor is worth like $5 billion, right? It's a $10 billion industry right now. So, home advisors is one of the leaders. Uh, your secondary leader is Cash Rabbit, right? And they're worth about $1 billion. They focus more on little tasks within the home and maybe outside the home. Yeah, TaskRabbit was the one I was trying yeah. to think of. So on TaskRabbit, they can hook you up. Didn't didn't um, uh, IKEA buy TaskRabbit? Exactly. Rabbit? IKEA bought TaskRabbit, and that tells you the value of the marketplaces, right? Because now you're looking at the services and the key um, value that service providers bring to the community. So the, the problem is the service providers are not obtaining as much return on investment as they should obtain. And that's where we're going to have for a competitive advantage. And then another marketplace lead is Thumbtack. Thumbtack is worth about a billion and a half dollars. They're probably our most com closest competitor because they have a wide range of services that we plan on offering. We plan on offering six service categories initially, home and garden, auto and transportation, beauty and personal care, health and wellness, pets and animals. But I've been yeah. approached by other people to say, why can't you offer business services as well because of the capabilities that are within Proterra? Yeah. So so now like Freelancer also is another one, right? That's They, they hook you up with people, to, but that's that might be doing some graphics or some logos or, you know, some business services. Exactly. Right? Those are business-related services that we can – tap into that market and based on my you know professional experience working at spe specifically at Microsoft and PayPal as you know business alliances and strategic partnerships are the key to accelerating your growth so we will be looking for opportunities partnering with you on this ask but then partnering with some of these freelancers and other marketplaces to help you know make it optimal for our users so I want to understand the difference on freelancer.com or TaskRabbit. They give you information on somebody, but then you connect with them over the internet and work your details. Whereas are you saying your business is more like Uber where you connect somebody and they actually through the app show up at your house or walk me through the so difference? So the difference is, and, and our competitors, they're mostly lead generators. Right. So if you're requesting a landscaper, for example, you put in a request for a landscaper, the marketplace um, industries, what they do is they'll send out those folks to local service providers. They can send out to, you know, 10, 20 or more. They charge them a fee for the quote. There's no guarantee that the service providers will obtain your business. Right. Because you still have to vet them. But the marketplaces, right. they obtain their fee that way. But as a service provider, you don't really have a return on investment because you've already paid for a quote you may not receive a service for. So our aspect is building a platform, and that's just a – they're not processing end-to-end. -end. So that's just generate a lead. You deal with the service providers outside the app, you transact out of the app, and that's your experience. That's what experience separates. What we're doing is building a platform that has an end-to-end -end experience where we're personalizing your request, your lifestyle. We're managing all the transactions in the app. We're partnering with Braintree right now as our payment processing provider. And then we would handle those capabilities because we want to be able to provide a thorough background check. So I'm partnering with Global Verification Network, and we're doing thorough background checks. So when providers come to your location of choice, whether it's home, work, or whatever, you know that they've been fully vetted. They've also been validated for local, city, and state business licenses as required. 
And the whole idea is to process in-app, make sure we can manage the ratings to make sure that the only the top service providers are providing services in the local communities. And then we also, our competitive advantage is we're paying all the payment processing fees for our service providers by us taking on this process in app. This way we can manage that. We personalize services for Kevin. You don't have to spend a lot of time searching for a request ad hoc. We want to be able to personalize your whole lifestyle and you don't have to worry about it anymore about scheduling and driving around and taking care of these activities. Gotcha. So, so now, so you hook them up directly with the folks. Do they, do they charge it within app? also is that is do the services get paid for in in the yes. app so payments are processed in app and that's where we have that in the end experience this way i know i went to dinner with a couple last night they're pest control owners and um you know they were saying that they only receive about 45 percent of the fees that they charge in this aspect they will receive 100 percent of the fees that they charge in addition to we're offering more capabilities um, as well so, and, and then what, what is your, you get paid? So they get a hundred percent. How do, how do you make money? So it's then? a two-sided model. So there's a subscription-based model for service provider that is about 65% less than the competitors. Our model from a revenue generation is there's a consumer fee that we charge 5% consumer as a cap at $10. So basically any service that's over $200, you won't pay more than $10 for that service. But the key is, as you know, time is valuable, right? In the past hour, you're not going to get that hour back. So that time can be valuable if you're spending unproductive time doing something, you don't, you don't get that time back. So we want to be able to get time back to our users so they can spend it more with their loved ones, uh, pets, animals, uh, reading, you know, things that they would like to do. Yeah. We want to give more time back to their life. We want to make it easier for them. Simplify. <laughs> gotcha. So, so let me ask you a question. Do, do you, uh, I'm, uh, charging the consumer 5% or 10 bucks, is, is that only if they use the service or do they pay that just to, just to go on and access? So the consumer fee is a service fee per transaction. Um, you know, the cap okay. is $10, but again, time is valuable. So it's based on um, how the consumer values their time. And the 5% is actually pretty low because when we survey probably up to 100 people, they were willing to pay 10 to 30% because of the convenience factor, because it's incorporating their whole entire lifestyle across those six categories. As you know, time is very valuable, right? So we feel that 5% is effective and efficient and the market share we're going for is about 2.4 percent and we we think we can grab that market share so so do you i, I have i'm just i'm asking yeah. some questions as a devil's yeah. advocate as a consumer when i think i'm going to come through you and pay you five percent on top of their fee it makes me think well if i went direct to the company I'm saving 5%. Right. It just, it's get, it's putting a negative in my mind of like, I'm paying more to use your service right. because I could just go direct and book it and not pay the 5%. Why not make the provider who's getting the business pay the 5% because it's a cost of doing business for him. He's getting a new client. It The client, I, I, I have a concern that the client is going to mean, if, if I went to Amazon to buy something and they said, look, we're going to hook you up with these product people, but you know, you got to pay us 5% on top of what you pay them. I don't know that their, their business model would be as successful. Um, I'm just giving you some thought, you know, just to, to think about because a, a service that is designed out in the marketplace to say, use us and pay more is 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 to me a negative situation that can give others the um i i just it's food for thought yeah, i yeah. i don't how did you come up with the five percent model that 
you know, w w have you run this by any kind of focus groups or where, how did you develop this so far? Yeah, so we did do some focus groups. And again, you know, on average, you know, consumers based on certain activities were willing to pay anywhere from 10 to 30% because of that time, you know, because of their busy lifestyle. If I look at some of our competitors, yes, Home Advisor and Thumbtack are free for consumers, but they charge extraordinary amount of fees to the service provider. So we're trying to balance it out where the consumers that will pay for the convenience, and that's why we're saying 2.4% of the market, the total market potential, is still worth $7 billion. That's the market that we're going for. Yeah, I mean, look, my, my, my one concern though, you're, as a business, Uber charges a very substantial portion of the fee, you know, and I think up to 30% or something, right. I, I'm not even sure, right? Right. But yeah. they're still losing billions, okay? Yeah. So, so my concern for you is, oh, okay, well, you're designing this so that the service providers don't pay exorbitant fees, okay, but you're bringing them a customer, okay? You're providing a valuable service. They're, every business has an expense allowance for customer acquisition. But yeah. now you're making the new customer pay for the customer acquisition cost. So I, I don't know, I, I'm concerned that you might have a business model that might need some tweaking as you go. And the, the, the guy that's getting the new client should always be willing to pay something, you know, to, to, you know for the cost of getting that new client. But I don't want to focus too much on that. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm documenting what I just said to you because I have a concern for that. But tell me how much money you've raised so far. And you said you're launching in July. So are, is the app pretty well done on the iOS now? Yeah, and you raised some valid concerns. Um, again, there's going to be a competitive advantage with the subscription model and so forth. But yes, we're launching in July. We're bootstrapping um, you know, to de toward development and launch over $100,000 between me and the co-founders. We plan to launch in July. We're on target for that. And I just brought on a chief marketing officer that's going to help with the increased awareness and acquisition. Um, Stephanie Harris Byers, she was an executive for Harpo Productions. So she's going to help me from a marketing perspective. And I think that was a big win for us from a marketing team perspective. Great, good. So you have, I, I saw your, um, um, your, your business plan deck, um, which was yes. well done. So I think, I think you're moving in the right direction here. Uh, how much capital are you looking for at this point? So the capital we're looking for for pre-seed because we're pre-valuation, right? And that's kind of hard to determine. You know, I modeled it pretty uh, conservatively, but we're looking for 1.25 million an investment, and uh, a part of that is going to be building our business intelligence platform. We just submitted yesterday for five provisional patents to on the capabilities that we plan on launching. So we have some provisional patents to increase our intellectual property. But yeah, we're looking at one point two five million dollar ask, and I would love to partner with you, Kevin. Um, so on this venture, okay, and that's basically what we're looking for as a partner. I got you. Okay. So listen, um, I think, are you launching in one market in particular? Are you launching nationwide or what's, what's your marketing plan? And do you have a budget for your marketing launch? Yeah, so our initial markets that we're launching for are in the states of Arizona and California. Okay. And then next year we'll be in New York and Texas. And it's a strategic approach to do a phase approach by looking at specific markets because as you know, Dynamics are different based on zip codes, locale, cities, regions. So we want to really understand all of the data-driven details as we prepare the launch in other states by 2021. So we have enough rich data to say, you know, this is what we can expect from marketing activities in a metropolitan area or urban area or, you know, areas, you know, as we start looking at different segmentation factors. Gotcha. Super. Okay, so do you have a marketing budget yet for your launch in July? Yes, we do have a marketing budget. You know, we were bootstrapping toward the launch. 
Um, and we will continue, you know, we are planning on being profitable in three years. I, I have an approach, you know, based on my experience working at Microsoft and PayPal is ensuring that there's a return on investment. And as you know, you know, in today's market like Uber and Lyft, you know, they're worth billions of dollars, but they're also losing billions of dollars. Um, but that's where my, you know, the team's expertise and the financial prowess that we look at data to ensure profitability in three years. Gotcha. Sounds fantastic. Well, listen, I appreciate your pitch. Well done. Nice presentation. Uh, I think there's a couple things to be thinking about. I'm going to sit with my team. Uh, my son's coming in this weekend. He and I will go okay. through this. We'll uh, yes. have some thoughts for you next week. Um, and um, congratulations on putting this together so far. And hopefully, um, hopefully you got a, you know, good opportunity here in the future. Um, uh, I will um, let you know on our interest in terms of the investment side. Um, I do want to, um, do you have a breakdown of what you're going to do for the marketing of this in July? You have sort of a, a little marketing plan. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Could, could I get a copy of that? Yes, I can send that to you right after the call. You okay. Know, based on website, uh, in person, and social media. Love to and see it. Just to let you know. Let me see that. Love I'll to see the marketing plan. Okay. All right. Yes. Hey, listen. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend, and we'll we'll uh, look forward to a follow up uh, next week sometime after you get me that marketing plan. I appreciate you, Kevin, and I appreciate your team. Thanks a lot. You bet. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Thanks. Bye. bye.